is up everybody my name is Mike Brown aka Review King MB and here's a film that I thought was perfect for my hundred movies that I've never seen before mostly because I've never even heard of this movie before I watched it it's something that the girlfriend and I were on HBO Max and it was there <laughs> she said she knew it she said she watched it a bunch of times growing up wanted me to watch it and so here we are this is a film called abandon it is a 2002 film directed by steven gaghan i think that's how you say his name it stars katie holmes playing a character named katie <laughs> i'm not saying it's obviously not the first time that an actor has played a character that has their same name but it was very bizarre throughout the movie to have everybody just calling her Katie. <laughs> it made me think, like, did she forget her character's name, so they just named her after her real name? Although, she had done movies, I think, before that, other than Dawson's Creek. She plays a character that's basically going through some abandonment issues, I guess you could say. Her ex-boyfriend, played by Charlie Hunnan, Ombre, he was a little controlling, a little possessive. He took her virginity. He kind of changed her personality from being all about the books and all about schoolwork, because uh, they're in college. And he tried to make her more free and open. But then all of a sudden, Charlie Hunnan's character disappears. We don't know why, we don't know where he went. We're following Katie Holmes, who's not only dealing with that, the, the, the stress of that, kind of the PTSD of the relationship, but also the possibility that maybe he's back and he's screwing with her. And you have Benjamin Bratt as a detective who's trying to figure out this case. Now, what I thought of Abandon is... I didn't hate this movie. I didn't think this movie sucked. I didn't think it was the worst movie I've ever seen. But I didn't really care for it all that much either. Katie Holmes, let's talk about Katie Holmes, who plays Katie Burke. She's fine in the role. She's not bad. She's not terrible. But I also, and I blame this more uh, with the writing, that there's not a lot of getting to know Katie or getting to relate to Katie. I mean, maybe if you're a girl who's been in a semi-abusive relationship, and you're dealing with the uh, PTSD of that, okay, I, I could see just a natural relatability there, but if you're someone like me who's trying to get a sense of this character and what's in her head and, and what she went through, throughout the movie you get some flashbacks of what her relationship with Charlie Hunnan was like, but it's weird. Those scenes, I never really got a good sense of why she would be in love with him or why she would uh, feel such a loss of him leaving her life. He felt controlling. He felt uh, like all of these things. And again, I know there are girlfriends who are with bad guys, controlling guys, even abusive guys, and they think they love them and blah, blah, blah. I get that. It Maybe we didn't get enough of their relationship for me to fully understand or you know they never even showed any moments of him being nice to her to make me believe that how they would start dating or how she would just give up her virginity to him I don't know maybe I'm being naive it's, it's very very possible I'm not saying I'm not above naivety. Charlie Hunnan as Ombre uh, the scenes that you get him in I guess he's viable or believable as the the ladies man type or the one that is used to girls throwing themselves at him he's believable as a douchebag <laughs> you see his face and you definitely want to punch it because of how cocky he is and when it looks like he's back to screw with her to play mind games with her to stalk her and to control her life that's where he becomes I guess the villain of sorts uh, Benjamin Bratt is the detective he's the guy who's trying to figure out uh, where Charlie Hunnan went what happened to him and he's and he's sort of looking after Katie and this is the part of the movie that I probably don't care for the most just because Benjamin Bratt is a male and Katie Holmes is a female they have to become love interests I just I don't know 
a part of me is looking at the age difference and going like, that's not cool. Uh, it's not like she's underage, and it's not like he's that much older, but still, I just kind of was like, I don't know, I didn't like it. But more so because Benjamin Bratt is the detective, he is doing his job, he is on a case, he's supposed to be questioning her, and maybe even protecting her from a potential ex who's back to hurt her, and he just like sleeps with her? It's, it's like, what? No! No! Makes me not care for Benjamin Bratt, you know, even though he has his alcoholic past and he has his issues with blacking out and maybe he's done stuff. That never really comes into play all that much either for the rest of the film. It just seemed like something for his character to do for a couple of scenes. Zoe Deschanel plays Katie's best friend, Samantha. They, You see them in the dorm together. Zoe Deschanel, she mostly just plays the girl who wants to get her to party, get her to sleep with another guy, get her to get over Charlie Hunnan. So I guess in some ways that's good, but she just doesn't seem like the best influence for Katie, and it's a thankless role. There's not much more to it. But speaking of thankless role, poor Gabrielle Union plays a character named Amanda. Who, who, why does it even matter what her character's name is? Because she gets maybe two scenes, says a couple of lines, and then is gone. You wonder why the hell did they cast someone uh, as recognizable as her in a role that is so meaningless? I don't know. This movie is more of a thriller, so it's not like you're going to have characters being killed off left and right, like a horror movie. But still, I saw some actors and I saw some characters that just felt completely wasted. There's another character named Harrison. I didn't recognize the actor, uh, so I didn't look him up. But he's obsessed with Katie Holmes. He's been in love with her since day one. Even when she was with Charlie Hunnan, uh, he was sort of trying to butt in and get involved in the relationship. and. Uh, like the scenes where he's trying to tell her how great she is and how perfect she is and how she could do anything she wants and she's just like, oh, leave me alone, dude. I mean, that's just that's the tone that she has when she replies back to him. It's so obvious that he likes her. It's so obvious that he's trying. It's sad. It's hard to watch. And then the one scene where he does profess his love for her, it goes just about the way you expect. And I can't say I feel all that bad for the dude. There's another random character named Mousy who always is bothering Katie Holmes in the library or just going up to her and saying, Hey, Katie, do you know how this happened? Do you know how this? Do you know about this? Uh, blah, blah, blah. And she's just very weird and awkward, and you're almost waiting for that character or that side plot to pay off in some way that doesn't. It just seem like, let's just have a weird person bother her for a couple of scenes. Also, just random actors that I recognize from other things that popped in. Mark Feuerstein, if that's even how you pronounce his last name right. I just recognized him from, uh, I think it was called Royal Pains, a TV show on the USA Network. I never watched it, but man, did they show so many goddamn commercials for that show, especially when I was watching Raw. And Tony Goldwyn plays the therapist, the school's doctor, who is talking to Katie Holmes. Again, like two scenes, and that's it. I just felt like, you got this actor? Just to do these couple bit parts? Again, weird, random, doesn't amount to anything. Really just there for some background noise. Maybe to try to sprinkle in what the twist ending is. I'm not going to get into the twist ending, I'm not just in case, spoilers, right? But I will say that I saw this coming a million miles away. A good half hour to 45 minutes before the movie ended, I said, it's probably this, right? I even looked over to her and said, this is probably what's going on, right? Of course, she doesn't want to admit that I'm right. But then when it happens, I'm like, of, of, co of course. There's no shock. There's no surprise. And I'm not saying that ruined the enjoyment of it. I think the fact that the movie was predictable and and a little boring and, and the characters weren't as interesting and the thrills aspect of it, it wasn't that scary or engaging for me to to be nervous for Katie Holmes' character. So yeah, overall, I thought the movie was what it was. Not the worst thing in the world, but I certainly don't see myself rewatching it 
anytime soon. So guys, let me know in the comments below if you two have seen Abandon. <laughs> what do you think of it? Do you like it? Do you love it? Is it something you've even ever heard of? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!